now I would like to uh, invite uh, the final speaker of today, uh, Janis Rachko from the Competition Council of Latvia, who will be talking about the challenges for competition authorities. Thank you, Yanis. Uh, thank you, <coughs> yes, uh, I'm Yes, I'm a lawyer and also a lawyer in the antitrust. antitrust lawyer in working in the Competition Council in Latvia. Our authority is a sole competition enforcer. There is different competition authorities which uh, supervise consumer rights and also data protection and also public utilities. And this meaning we are only enforcing and also advocate, advocating in the sphere of competition against abuse of dominance, uh, prohibited agreements, and also additionally to uh, advocating against uh, actions of public undertakings more widely than we have enforcement powers. And what we uh, I want to talk about, uh, about the challenges of competition authority globally, maybe we are the maybe small competition authority which enforce competition law and uh, of course do not have such resources and other authorities but any way we are and we should be able we need to be able to also interact in situations where is big data analyzed where is digital economy or digital markets analyzed uh, also, is there, are there competition concerns or are there not competition concerns? Talking generally about the challenges uh, in the digital markets, yes, main, mainly all of these challenges and characteristics were mentioned in previous presentations. Uh, what I can add uh, about what is, was mentioned previously, mainly talking about uh, about the supply side, about the strategy of the firms, of, about how to big data affects uh, the, the market, uh, how it drives the market power. What can I add about this uh, demand side? What is important from the demand side and also characterized uh, the digital markets. Maybe switching costs for consumers is not a very new concept. Of course, it raises the barriers also in other markets. But in this mar in, in uh, digital markets, it uh, gives a new uh, substance and uh, it involves new, I'd say, the switching costs for consumers are mainly cons could the consumers take away their data, their individual data, or what are the possibilities for the, for example, consumer to switch to another social network? It will rise for consumer a big barrier to not one the factor. What I yes I have to mention is. is uh, data consumer already have in this network, has in this network. Another factor is what was mentioned and connected with uh, network effects that all the con consumers, uh, all the who are involved in certain network are giving value for each other and creating value for each net network and of course shifting from one network usually it's impossible for consumer also from the side of there if there if he will anyway leave this network and shift to another network he will not g gain such value from this network because there will be no other uh, friends uh, relatives which are it was in previous network uh, this about mainly about social networks where consumers are in and the demand side the barriers to switch is very important in digital markets and it's more higher than in other markets. 
uh, talking about the challenges of competition and also consumer protection, that the protection authorities generally, yes, it's a new possible forms of misconduct that arises from actions of uh, different new market players, maybe not so new, but uh, using the big data. And in, from competition side, it's, there's our actions as abuse of dominance, uh, possible use or uh, algorithms that could possibly create cartels. Uh, from consumer protection, it could be any misleading or unfair practices uh, against consumers. Of course, authorities have to adopt uh, new analytical techniques to analyze the markets in case of abuse of dominance to define the markets, to, to also to define, uh, identify the dominance. Is there a dominance uh, in the market for, is there a certain market or if there is no certain market, is there possibilities for the consumer or for clients to switch to another's uh, competitors? Uh, risks uh, of over and under enforcement, that was also mentioned. Uh, yes, it it's creates risks if, if authority fails with evaluation in this market or defining the market, identifying the abuse, it could create over enforcement and risks that uh, enforcement could lead for more negative situation in the market that changes market in a negative way. Yes, of course, there is debate about the need of new legislation. Uh, I personally feel that in competition field, there, these concepts that are already adapted with certain modifications could be used also in digital markets, analyzing algorithmic uh, behavior either tacit collusion or explicit collusion or abuse of dominance. But anyway, in other fields of consumer protection, there, of course there is need to define or identify certain practices, set the certain requirements for companies who act in these markets. Uh, main uh, actions of competition regulator, these are classical advocacy with the aim to remove administrative barriers or to promote competition uh, if there is uh, maybe lack of regulation in the market. Uh, of course, it's, uh, as I mentioned, enforcement of abuses and cartels, evaluation of mergers. Till now, we didn't have such classical measures, of course, as Commission had and evaluated. And of course, there is some measures which involved uh, some markets where uh, digital products are provided. Until now, there was no uh, worries about that it, it will create market power. But anyway, I agree that um, buying from the, if we talk about these biggest market players, Google, Facebook, uh, if they used to buy, if they choose to buy as a competitor, it's likely that it is, they are doing that to exclude potential, maybe potential, also for competition in the future. And it creates a risk, of course, evaluation made by the competition authorities in major cases is mainly, of course, in these cases, especially is problems to predict what this undertaking, this, what this digital company will buy, could this undertaking uh, really effectively act in the market without investments. It was mentioned this Facebook and Instagram situation case uh, in these situations, it could be very hard for competition authority to decide what will be in the future, how Instagram will develop in the future. Of course, that is very, uh, it's worth to mention is due to most of the markets becoming more close to competitors, excluding intermediaries. There's possibilities for those who are offering their products 
go to competitors and offer the products directly to consumers. And in this situation, the cooperation with consumer and also data protection regulators became more important. Yes, talking about the certain issues in digital markets, uh, what I have to mention is about algorithmic use of algorithms. Of course, uh, it's not, not only used in digital markets, but also in uh, markets where uh, goods are sold. Uh, also, as we know, we sometimes all companies trying to adapt these algorithms to uh, how to say, to lower the cost of price setting, uh, do, introducing algorithms, it allows to com for company to not to do it manually, not to do with a certain persons, but to, and also to be ready to react in a fast uh, way, uh, also be competitive in the market in this situation. That means that it's it's a normal situation of rivalry that com companies are seeking how to get information about competitors, about the pricing of competitors legally, and also using algorithms. What is the problem? Uh, mainly that in digital markets, maybe I can mention this uh, classical retail fuel market, whereas pricing transparency, what and it, what it creates a positive effects for consumers, of course, but from other side, it may create a negative effects for competition or slower competition due to the parallel, parallel behavior of the uh, companies in the market. This, yes, it's from one side is positive, from other side it could be negative. Of course, parallel behavior is not forbidden as per se, but anyway, it's digital markets, it's big, it comes to the next level, then you can looking, using algorithms and getting information from other competitors about the pricing of other competitors, or react and uh, choose your strategy immediately. Of course, there is no restrictions in number of goods, products digitally analyzed. In, uh, as I mentioned, this, this fuel retail market, there was what was classical that there was three or four comparable homogeneous products, usually manually analyzed, looking uh, what is on the pill on, on a competing fuel retail station and changing the price if the other competing station changes the price. But in this situation, this is not needed, and anyway, it's using algorithms. It could be anal dozens of products could be analyzed in a second, and then decision what what to do with the price uh, strategy in this situation from supply side. Uh, could, decision could be taken Im immediately. Of course, strategies could differ from the company to company. If, of course, there is no cartel agreement in the market. In this situation, yes, one company may decide, yeah, I have to follow uh, the price. Uh, if other company rises the price, maybe I'll, I introduce algorithms who will follow this price. Uh, other company may choose it and introduce other algorithms. Of course, it's easiest for companies or markets where this high price transparency, pricing transparency to introduce parallel behavior. And if one company rises the price, where is the risk that other company will follow? Yes, so there is also no need to signal the price changes. And yes, as I mentioned, risk of exclusion of competition through parallel behavior. Uh, Yes, this comp concept was analyzed in competition in our other, in authority cases uh, in fuel retail market, and there was no uh, infringement found till now. But looking the future and looking uh, 
in digital markets, it's my, on a personal view, there could be situations that if there is evident negative effect on competition on the market, price or non-price competition, the parallel, parallel behavior may be also deemed or uh, concluded that this is infringement. Of course, mainly it could be based on effect and approach. There is, I don't know how to, it could be based on per se rule approach. Because talking about personalized pricing, but mainly is not so concerned from competition authority point of view, because if you talk about uniform pricing and personal pricing, Personal pricing gives advantage for company to offer individual prices for consumers, and also these prices are usually not uh, seen by other competitors. It, these are in individuals, and that is a, creates a hidden competition and possibilities to consumers switch from one uh, uh, competitor to another. Talking about, yes, personal pricing is versus pricing transparency and uniform pricing, pricing prices that are uh, available online and usually analyzed by alg algorithms. It could be mainly with a positive effect. Of course, there is risks of consumer price discrimination, uh, individual discrimination, maybe in some situations exploitation of consumers but uh, due to the asymmetry of information uh, consumers have, but only in situations, yes, if there is consumer can not uh, analyze through comparing websites from other inf um, information sources, get information about prices offered by other competitors. Maybe in these situations could be exploitive abuse risk. Also, the zero price markets and non price competition was mentioned in Google case. Uh, there is, yes, there is quality as a competition uh, factor was mainly analyzed. There is no price, but yes, and in this situation, zero price markets, and, and also I agree that. There is at least two side or multi side markets, uh, and one side affects another, of course, but anyway, the market power rises and is it rises from the data acquired by the for example Google or Facebook, which allow then later to to attract advertisers for and yes, to attract the advertisers and to offer different products. Talking about um, competition issues locally, there is in Competition Council history, history it's, it's a little bit, both are a little bit old cases. Of course, it, it, these are uh, connected with the digital markets. Uh, the first case was uh, of the about comparing websites, where one comparing website uh, tried uh, with a certain behavior, and this uh, website was dominant, uh, as we concluded, uh, trying to put restrictions on clients not to use competitors' logos and banners in uh, other in the, in their websites. Uh, the other. Com the one com comparing website, the name of it is Salizi Nove, and the other competing website was, I don't know the name, but anyway, uh, there was only two market players in the market in Latvia. Kurpir, yes. And of course, market definition in this market is more or less clear that this specific market, specific search market, and uh, where maybe it was doubt about the dominance, defining the dominance, uh, what we used, we used the uh, data from the special 
websites which analyze um, uh, unique uh, searches made in certain websites and gives a number and this due to these numbers uh, one website comparing website was uh, had considerably yes bigger market share yes the case ended with uh, commitments where this uh, market player was obliged to behave according to competition rules uh, also, the other case was about denying access to public transportation database. Uh, this was a case about uh, monopoly in one market, a uh, market player who developed the database for road transportation agency also tried to use this power in downstream markets. Uh, supplying the products to intercity inter bus providers who needed to install in their buses the cash registers and telematic devices. And this equipment was op op this was important equipment and also obligatory according to regulations. But uh, this uh, database operator, if the this equipment used was not there used, uh, also denied access. This access was not denied in explicit form, mainly saying that there is not, uh, we can't connect information, we can give s some details about you should do it, and, uh, and this situation was led to restrictions, yes, related to, in related market, in downstream market, and also it delayed uh, it maybe is some uh, re relevant for innovation use of new cash registers and telematic devices. What is mainly now our field of work is mainly connected with uh, administrative barriers uh, created by public bodies, over, over regulation, yes, it's, it's, it's creates a risk to our our mind uh, in situations of course there is need to secure different public interests there was mentioned this anti-money laundering regulations there is also sometimes tax regulations involved uh, but anyway I agree that these interests have to be balanced with uh, interests not to exclude other competitors new competitors for example in fintech sector to enter market or to overburden these competitors that they will they are for sometimes will choose to to exit the market. Or in some cases there are situations that there is intention, not explicit also, but indirect intention to protect classical markets, their taxes versus ride sharing. Of course, uh, there, uh, we agree that there, e there was need and there is now regulation for ride sharing in Latvia, but uh, previously there was no regulation. But anyway, at the first stage, the intentions to regulate this ride sharing market was too high and requirements was too high. We, our opinion was that uh, mainly uh, requirements should be lowered in taxi markets. Of course, they are both competing. They are offered at the same services. As the other situation is the entrance of public body in actual well-functioning markets. The, what can I mention? Uh, the last uh, was uh, the cabinet this was a uh, regulation of the cabinet of the ministers where was said that also the state register of enterprises would also sell information online as other competitors uh, like Lurso previously they also sold in this information to individuals but not to the commercial 
undertakings. According to this regulation, also we objected, the market was opened, and, and also there was given possibility to state to register to enter the market. Of course, it was in, to some extent related for intentions to, so to minimize the risks of anti-money laundering, to give more precise and accurate information for those different notaries, law firms who are also involved to, to, to analyze information about the clients. A more serious format uh, is, as we had, the situation of the, is really exclusion and discrimination of private competitor by public um, body. In this situation, it was in Riga parking uh, market and connected with electronic payments. Historically, of this market, there were of course, this market was historically then the Riga parking operator, which is municipal undertaking, also operated and received payments in these cash machines that are located near the parking lots. But also there was allowed to enter in the market new market player who f for first uh, what they are uh, to react for to, to, to offer for the consumers more convenient service, offer the SMS uh, possibility to pay by SMS, open the account, and then possibility to pay the SMS for the parking lot, also to start the parking, to end the parking, that's uh, save the time for consumers, also it's enabled consumers to uh, pay only for that time they are usually using the, this parking lot. Later, this uh, new market player, which is Mobili, as you maybe most of them you know, uh, also developed the application uh, app where was possibility to also pay by in application form. Later, this municipal undertaking also tried to enter the market and to favoritize this uh, maybe, of course, the reasons and the groundings of municipality, why it was done, was that there is need for consumers to offer the Riga citizens who have a Riga card offer a lower prices, uh, make the benefits, give the benefits for them if they are using parking lots, and, but anyway, it was restricted and given only to this Riga municipal undertaking rights to offer the lower prices we, for the consumers who are acting in, who are using the services and who are Riga citizens. Uh, Mobile, of course, it's, it, it is not independent undertaking. They are supplying anyway services to this municipal company who is also active in this market and they, they, are, they are not able to set the lower price. There was not able to set the lower price or they maybe are they willing. And in these situations, uh, authority concluded that there is discrimination of course, it's not maybe so digit, so classically digital market, but it's uh, more about how a public authority handles also uh, these restrictions and introduces restrictions also in digital markets, developing their IT infrastructure, also this infrastructure and. Uh, the means how consumers are allowed to pay is by Riga Citizen Card, is connected with uh, etiqueting system we have in uh, Riga uh, so public transport, which is also closed system and are mainly allowed to use by special tickets. Okay, thank you, if there is question. Thank you, Yanis. I have some questions, but I'll give an, uh, the opportunity to audience to ask if they have. First. 
No. So I'll, I'll ask my question, yes. if I may. It's to do with price uh, transparency. And you were saying that you know, if we take the fuel market, that a competitor would set a price and an algorithm would analyze the other competitor's price and adjust accordingly. I mean, do you not think this will lead to what I'm calling, and I don't know if the term exists, digital cartelling? Robot cartels, is that the term? Yes, this term yeah. is used, but uh, if, we, if we are talking about, I use this uh, retail fuel market uh, as an example to mention that uh, previous in previous cases we analyzed private parallel behavior and the features we see in this market and the concepts we analyze are closely re related to now to digital markets. Then they concluded that parallel behavior is okay if undertaking independently uh, follows the pricing of other undertaking. It's it is not an infringement of competition. But if we talk about uh, now situation in digital markets, you mentioned robot cartels. It creates uh, more concerns that competition in these markets will stop or be very, very stable, mainly price competition, and it could create, it creates more concerns in the future. Yes, algorithmic uh, parallel behavior, although it's made maybe independently, or both are analyzing only prices and algorithms just taking decisions. It's depending how these algorithms are taking decisions. Thank you.